Hey everybody, welcome back. Wayne here. And uh, today we're gonna continue the series that we started last week around the survey that a fair recovery did a while back. And the topic is, what do you need to know to survive infidelity? What we have seen time and time again is that discovery and or disclosure is so important to recovery from infidelity or even sexual addiction. And without that full disclosure, the betrayed spouse is constantly replaying the story, trying to make sense of everything. They roll this thing around in their head every which way they can. And the most common reason for the unfaithful spouse withholding information is because they fear that it will be too much, that the last detail will be the final straw or revealing that whole truth will be just too painful and then their spouse is gonna leave. So then the unfaithful spouse will deliver this trickle truth is what we call it, just trickling out little bits of information slowly over time. Unfaithful spouses, please hear me in this when I say that this is absolute torture for the betrayed spouse. Each time they get new information, even a little piece of information, it takes them right back to square one. And it's as if they're hearing it all over again for the very first time. More than reliving the information, your spouse is reliving all the confusion, all the trauma and all the turmoil that's associated with recovery after infidelity. And if you've been on our site for a while, or if you're a member of the Affair Recovery Library, You've heard Rick and me say this many, many times before. A Fair Recovery conducted a survey of hundreds of our readers a while back to determine what you wish you had known at the time of discovery. And that'll be the focus for our newsletter today. And they wrote in in response to the question, what did you not know that you needed to know after infidelity came to light? that would have helped you along your journey. And the answer from betrayed spouses fell into five different categories, and we're gonna talk about those. Starting with the women, 27% of women reported taking personal responsibility for their mate's infidelity. They reported the difficulty in recovery because they were trying to fix something that ultimately they had little or no control over. This isn't to say that they were perfect in their marriages. Bad marriages are not the root of infidelity. You've heard me say this before, that surviving infidelity and ultimately thriving in the relationship means that each person has to take responsibility for how they're treating their partner, how they show up in the relationship. There are two people in every bad marriage, and generally, only one of them has an affair. So therefore, it's not the bad marriage causing the infidelity, even if the unfaithful is blaming the marriage or the spouse for their infidelity. In retrospect, these women felt that their time would have been far better spent allowing their mate to take responsibility for their actions. And here's what one woman said. I felt like I had failed. If I had been enough, it wouldn't have happened. I was so ashamed, even though he was the one that did it. That's a really common response. I hear that probably weekly at least. The second most common is that 21% of the betrayed women felt that their recovery would have been improved if their mate had just answered their questions undefensively, without anger. And this is supported by the statistic that couples who can talk about what happened what had occurred over a period of time had a far greater chance of surviving the affair. And in order to restore trust and safety in a relationship, the unfaithful spouse must also trust their mate with the information. And here are some examples of the comments that some of these women had made. My husband told me little bits and pieces about how he was unfaithful. I wish he would have just told me the whole truth once and for all so that healing could begin sooner. Another wrote in that I want the whole story, the whole truth, no matter how painful it was at the time. And that surviving infidelity means ultimately being honest and open and vulnerable. 
Another 17% of women said that understanding why it happened, as well as their mate's motivations for recovery, made it difficult to determine whether it was safe to continue in the relationship or not. At the early stages, why is such a big question? And it's really not the question to be asking at that point. You wanna know what first, what happened? You wanna be able to get your arms around that. Why is such a big question? And it's the question that most of the betrayed spouses are gonna have many, 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 many times for a while. But in the early stages of recovery, you're most likely to just get justifications. It'll take some infidelity-specific work to help them uncover the why and why they were unfaithful and to correctly align their motivation for recovery. The fears of our respondents were summed up with statements like this. We can only change ourselves. People change when they want to or they're ready to. But sometimes they don't know how. If an individual can't get to the answer of the question why they were cheating, the behavior has a high likelihood of repeating itself. And the truth is, again, that takes time to get to the why. I would say at least six to nine months, maybe even a year, if they're doing really good work. Because the further away you get from it, the bigger and broader and better the perspective gets as to the why. So it's not a bad question, it's just probably not time for it in the early stages of recovery. The fourth most common response by 16% of the betrayed women was that they wished they had realistic expectations going into recovery and knew that there was actually hope to be found. I've said for years that there's always hope in, the, in even the most dire situations. The intensity of the pain and the disorientation created by infidelity left them out of touch with reality. And simply knowing that what they were going through was normal would have been helpful, or common would have been helpful. Understanding what to expect would have minimized some of the collateral damage they experienced. They also reported that knowing there was hope for recovery would have prevented them from saying and doing things that were so destructive. In relation to surviving infidelity, one of the people wrote, I wish I had known that recovery was possible and that we would try to work things out down the road. And knowing that would have helped me avoid some of the terrible things I said to him and wrote to him. And also that more I wrote to him, the more I pushed him away. So I wanted him to hurt like me and I did let him have it. And I wish I had been softer and less out there with my feelings. The final significant challenge for women was not knowing at the time of discovery what steps to take in order to move forward in the most productive way possible. Not knowing what to do kept them stuck longer than was necessary. There comes a point in time in recovery after making a few mistakes and feeling the sting of moving backwards and forwards and backwards again, where fear can immobilize you. You are miserable where you are, but terrified to move forward or really in any direction. What if that's the cliff's edge? These women needed trustworthy guidance from others who have recovered themselves and know what productive recovery looks like. And here are some of the comments that we received from them. I wish I knew not all counselors are the same. Some have experience in infidelity and some don't. And it's a, it's a specialized field. How to put one foot in front of the other. In other words, I was in shock mode most of the time and did not know what to do. I needed a guide, but didn't even know how or where to find one. And I wish I had sought help or expert help sooner. So those are the top five responses from women. And what we found with men, we found it interesting that the needs were the same for betrayed men, although the importance of each category changed a bit. The top one is I needed to know the truth about what had happened. And second, with 21% said I needed to know what happened and my mate's motivations for their recovery. 19% said I needed to know that it was, I was not responsible for the betrayal. 
And 16% said I needed to know the necessary steps to move forward in the most productive way. And last, I needed to know what to expect on the journey of recovery and that there was hope. Surviving infidelity is a tough, tough road, and it's a long road, but one that is definitely possible and worth it. If you're new to recovery, I hope you'll learn from the experiences of those who've gone before and found some healing. There's no doubt that we can learn from their lessons today and get on with the path to healing much sooner than some. Now that you have this list of the top five things our readers wish they had known as a starting point, seek help that addresses these concerns. And if you're not sure how to begin, check out the Harboring Hope course if you're the betrayed spouse. It will walk you step by step through the many stages of recovery with expert help and a supportive community. So I'm going to be back again next week to continue talking about this. I hope you're staying safe and healthy. Come back again next week. We're going to wrap up this topic about surviving infidelity based on the survey results. And just know that we're here to support you any way we can. Thanks so much for joining me.